evening commemorating the, the First World War, um, poetry commemorating the First World War. Uh, perhaps, uh, as, you, as you can, can see in the uh, title page of the program, I've, I've called this evening Felicitas on the Wheel of War, or Law, that is to say, uh, for poetry of the World War. Um, uh, yes, the focus will be obviously on the First World War. But I've tried to create a kind of narrative arc uh, which extends from 1914 to uh, today. I'll say a little bit more about that in, uh, in a second. Um, uh, I myself will uh, read the poems, uh, some of the poems in English. Uh, uh, others will be here to uh, read other poems in English and in the languages that you have just mentioned. We're going, to, we're going to read the poems in the order that they are printed in your, in your program. Um, we're going to skip the Akhatova poem, because unfortunately our Russian reader can't be here, but you have a translation of, 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 of this wonderful uh, poem about July 1914, uh, in which we have sort of first thoughts by Akhatova about the Possibly, probably horrific implications that the start of this conflict uh, would have, uh, which we can read there. Hold on. Yes. We have a Russian reader here. We do have a Russian reader here. Yeah. Would you yeah. volunteer to do? Yeah, I will try. You will try? Yeah. Excellent. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Yeah. So we'll have one more poem. Yeah? Okay. okay. <laughs> logistics, logistics. <laughs> um, right. Okay. I was already um, uh, uh, looking to my left to the to the musicians uh, there. I'll ask if they know. Actually, in fact, start with a poem uh, written in 2008 by the by the English poet Simon Armitage. Armitage did a series of, uh, for Channel 4, uh, a series of interviews with, uh, with veterans from various conflicts. And the First World War, and, and this was about, the, the theme was what in the First World War was still called shell shock and is now known as, as post-traumatic stress disorder. And that is sort of, that's the, the narrative that I'll start with, that I'll dilute during the poems that follow and then come to a kind of climax, if that is not too undiplomatic a word, in the final poem. So the idea of shell shock of those who, who managed to survive but had other wounds, mental, psychological wounds, inflicted on them uh, in this conflict. That is sort of the narrative of the poetry uh, we're going to read tonight. And I'll ask uh, Renan Zelada to say a bit more about the music that you'll hear tonight. I'm uh, Renan Zelada. I'm a student of uh, composition from the York Royal Conservatory here in The Hague. Uh, and uh, together with uh, Sikhinder Bortas, also a student of composition and Raul Santana, just piano. All of us are from the uh, Royal Conservatory. We, well, we're going to perform some pieces that uh, we composed and you know, another piece by Maurice Ravel. Well, which are all uh, inspired in a way by these themes of the <coughs> First World War and, uh, and among other things uh, we were discussing because it was like a group effort. I, I wasn't composing a lot of it, of course. And uh, some ideas came out of uh, the second Hebrew school, for example, that is, uh, came up uh, around that time and uh, then some reflections about uh, what death and what happens after the war. So we will be really dealing with these kind of things in our pieces, hopefully. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the opening poems in your program are fragments from, uh, by Jesse Pope, who was a jinguist poet, calling the, 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 the fit young men of England to the battlefield. And as you can see, she talks about the game, the wonderful game that will be played in the battlefield. And as a contrast, I picked a, a fragment from Charles Wood, uh, Charles Wood's national anthem uh, about the soldier who decides that, yeah, it's 
better for my health not to enlist. <laughs> uh, those two fragments, so you can see as the, as, the, as, the, as the theme, expressing the main theme of this, of this night. I'll start myself with the Simon Armitage's poem, Albi. Back when grenades were pine cones and guns and sticks. I played Churchill's speeches, fought on the beaches at Vera Lynn and sang from the white cliffs. And I dreamed the dream of a hero's welcome, of flags and bunting lining the streets. Of drinking for free in every bar, of beautiful women with open arms and white cotton sheets. But instead of klaxons and union jacks, in sticking plasters to cover the cracks, and I be prone to ease the mind. Without blood or scars or a missing leg, you're swinging lead. Without entry wounds and exit wounds or burns to the face, you're just soft in the head. And the British Army isn't the place for a lying bastard or a basket case. What I did, I did for St. George and for England and God. Now I sleep in sweat, slaying the dragon or training the crosshairs on mum. Daft, shooting them, dead. Distraction helps. The beast starts in the day, cut back by the noise and the light. But after the action, emptiness falls on the hawthorn and darkness stirs. Then cometh the night. Next poem will be read. May Wedderburn in Cannon. Rouen. Early morning over Rouen. Hopeful, high, courageous morning. And the laughter of adventure and the steepness of the stair. And the dawn across the river and the wind across the bridges. And the empty littered station and the tired people there. Can you recall those mornings and the hurry of awakening? and the long forgotten wonder if we should miss the way, and the unfamiliar faces and the coming of provisions, and the freshness and the glory of the labour of the day. Hot noon tide over Rouen, and the sun upon the city, sun and dust unceasing, and the glare of cloudless skies, and the voices of the Indians, and the endless stream of soldiers, and the clicking of the tatties and the buzzing of the flies. Can you recall those noon times and the reek of steam and coffee, heavy laden noon times, with the evening's peace to win, and the little piles of woodbines and the sticky soda bottles, and the crushes in the parlour and the letters? Quiet night time over Rouen, and the station full of soldiers, all the youth and pride of England from the ends of all the earth, and the rifles piled together, and the creaking of the sword bells, and the faces bent above them, and the gay, heart-breaking mouth. Can I forget the passage from the cool white bed at a post? past the long, sun-blistered coaches of the khaki Red Cross train to the truck train full of wounded and the weariness and laughter and goodbye and thank you, sister, and the empty yards again. Can you recall the parcels that we made them for the railroad, crammed and bulging parcels held together by the string? and the voices of the sergeants who called the drafts together, and the agony and splendour when they stood to save the king. Can you forget their passing, the cheering and the waving, the little group of people at the doorway of the shed, the 
sudden, awful silence when the last train swung to darkness and the lonely desolation and the mocking stars overhead. Can you recall the midnights and the footsteps of night watchers, men who came from darkness and went back to dark again, and the shadows on the real lines, and the all inglorious labour, and the promise of the daylight firing blue the window pane? Can you recall the passing through the kitchen door to morning? Morning, very still and solemn, breaking slowly on the town. And the early coastways engines that had met the ships at daybreak, and the draft just out from England, and the day shift coming down. Can you forget returning slowly, stumbling on the cobbles, and the white decked Red Cross barges dropping seawards from the tide, and the search for English papers, and the blessed cool of water, and the peace of half closed shutters that shut out the world outside. Can I forget the evenings and the sunset on the island? and the tall black ships at anchor far below our balcony, and the distant call of bugles and the white wine in the glasses, and the long line of the street lamps stretching eastwards to the sea. When the world slips slow to darkness, when the office fire burns lower, my heart goes out to ruin, Ruin all the world away. When other men remember, I remember our adventure and the trains that go from ruin at the ending of the day. So sterben wir, so sterben wir. Wir sterben alle Tage, weil es so gemütlich sich sterben lässt. Morgens noch in Schlaf und Traum, mittags schon dahin. Abends schon zu uns im Grabe hin. Die Schlacht ist unser Freudenhaus, von Blut ist unsere Sonne. Tod ist unser Zeichen und Losungswort. Weib und Kinder verlassen wir, was gehen sie uns an, wenn man sich auf uns nur verlassen kann. So morden wir, so morden wir, wir morden alle Tage. Unsere Kameraden im Totentanz. Bruder, reck dich auf vor mir, Bruder, deine Brust. Bruder, der du fallen und sterben musst. Wir murren nicht, wir knurren nicht, wir schweigen alle Tage, bis sich vom Gelenke das Hüftbein dreht. Hart ist unsere Lagerstadt, trocken unser Brot, blutig und besudelt der liebe Gott. Wir danken dir, wir danken dir, Herr Kaiser, für die Gnade, dass du uns zum Sterben erkoren hast. Schlafe nur, schlafe sanft und still, bis dich auferweckt unser armer Leib in the last decade. We're going to play. It's inspired by the work of Anton Weber, an Austrian composer who lived and worked during the first half of the 20th century. He enrolled in the Austrian army in 1915 during the war, but was discharged uh, a year later due to his poor eyesight. And uh, the piece we're going to play is inspired by his uh, variations uh, for piano opus.
de rug met angst beladen. Wel in den mond het fluitje schrikt als het riet plots ruist. Het lijf in slijk geplant en om de wereld nacht. Het ganse wezen vol van nacht en slijk en schimmen van het regelmatig schieten dat als stervensklacht schel raken links de kogels u op het hoofd doet grimmen. U daar te weten, meters van uw post gedreven en als een levend offer voor miljoenen man en dood is u voor het oog als een schavot verheven en leert u het leven kennen en de grens ervan. Alleen te zijn en moe en sterveling voor den dood en koel te loeren in het duister en de struiken zich steeds herzeggend, het wordt dat zelfmoord u gebood, wanneer de vreemde uw pad tot opmars zou gebruiken. In het geluid der kogels en der woeste bommen, dat oorverdovend is, de ratten stil bevreesd hun kreten horen slaken. Wel voortaan de stomme verwijderde blikken van de dood uw branden in de geest. Tot weer het leven u uit deze diepte voert. En gul weer maakt uw hand en het slijk weert van uw kleren. En zon legt op uw haar en kalm uw ziel ontroert. Daar ge in die nacht. Van mens de grootste vrees moet leren. Grodek. Heer Trakner, Grodek. Am Abend tönen die herbstlichen Wälder von tödlichen Waffen, die goldenen Ebenen und blauen Seen, darüber die Sonne düster hinrollt, umfängt die Nacht sterbende Krieger, die wilde Klage ihrer zerbrochenen Münder. Doch Stille sammelt im Weiden rot und rotes Gewölk, darin ein zürnender Gott wohnt, das vergotten gegossene Blut sich. Mond ne Kühle. Alle Straßen münden in schwarze Verwesung, unter goldenen Gezweig der Nacht und Sternen. Es schwankt der Schwester Schatten durch den schweigenden Heim. Zu grüßen die Geister der Helden, die blutenden Häupter, und leise tönen im Rohr die dunklen Flöten des Herbstes. O stolzere Trauer, ihr ehernen Altäre, die heiße Flamme des Geistes nährt heute ein gewaltiger Schmerz, die ungeborenen Enkel. It's an anthology of First World Poetry edited by Geert Bullens, a very fat tone, with, uh, from which I've, I've chosen many of the poems you uh, will hear uh, tonight. Wonderful edition. Our next. Uh, the poem is an Hungarian poem. Uh, can I have the uh, Hungarian? Adi Ekre, Pulla a Közökről. Ott felettél a havas síkon, Ászatlan sírja, Sohasem nő, Szekfült, Isten fa, Vazsadik. Erik a tódik nagy csendesen, s növendékeim veri rajta át a győzedelmes búzaszem. S a nyáron meg torlatta a napon, mint megcsúfolt madárjesztő arany tengerben fövegynek alul. Tetikró sorsa már távolba zúg, s belőle és fölötte díszik az élet, a reményes és a hazú. Guillaume Apollinaire, si je me fais la bas, si je me fais la bas sur le front de l'armée, tu pleurerais un jour où vous m'avez aimé. Et puis mon souvenir s'éteindrait comme un leurre, un obus éclatant sur le front de l'armée, un bel obus semblable aux mimosas en fleurs. Et puis ce souvenir éclaté dans l'espace couvrirait de mon sang le monde tout entier. La mer, les monts, les vagues et les, et les étoiles qui passent, les soleils merveilleux mûrissant dans l'espace, comme font les fruits d'or autour de Baratier. Souvenir oublié, vivant dans toutes choses, je rougirai le bout de tes jolies s'imposent. Je 
pour gérer ta bouche et tes cheveux sont blancs, qu'il ne vieillirait point toutes ces belles choses, rajeunirait toujours pour leur destin galant. Le fatal giclement de mon cœur sur le monde, de mon sang sur le monde, donnerait au soleil plus de vive clarté, aux fleurs plus de couleur, plus de vitesse à l'onde, un amour inouï descendrait sur le monde. L'amant serait plus fort, non, mon corps éclat, écarté. Loup, si je meurs la base, souvenir qu'on oublie, souviens-toi quelquefois aux instants de foule. De jeunesse et d'amour et d'éclatante d'ardeur, mon sens est la fontaine ardente du bonheur, et sois la plus heureuse et dans la plus jolie. Ô oh, mon unique amour et ma grande folie, la nuit descend, mon y pressant, à mon destin de sang. Merci. Ha bisogno di qualche ristoro, di un orgoglio che vuole il disperso. Negli incastri famosi dei sassi, come un merla di questa contrada, vuole tremare piano alla luce. Ma io non sono nella fionda del tempo che la scania dei sassi tarlati dell'improvvisa strada di guerra. Da quando ho guardato il viso immortale del mondo, questo pazzo ha voluto sapere, cadendo nel labirinto del suo cuore bruciato. Si è appiattito come una rotaia, mio cuore in ascoltazione, ma si scopriva a seguire come una sia una scomparsa navigazione. Guardo l'orizzonte che si vaiola di crateri. Mio cuore vuole illuminarsi come questa notte almeno di zampigli di razzi. Prego il mio cuore che si incaverna e schianta ed entrona come un proiettile nella pianura, ma non mi lascia neanche un segno di volo. Il mio povero cuore, spigottito di non sapere. the Dies Iria, the Day of Wrath, which is the sequence for the Repio Mass. And the second one is uh, Victime Pascale Daudes, or Let Us Praise the Passover Offering, which is a sequence for the Easter, month, Easter Mass. With both these chants, we are, which are in the same key, we wish, we wish to symbolize the eternal theme of death and rebirth. Just for, you know, the first theme, Dies Iria and the Sun.
some of the uh, psychological effects that some of the poets who have experienced themselves and written about. I'll start with uh, Siegfried Sassoon's Suicide in the Trenches. I knew a simple soldier boy who dreamed at life in empty joy, slept soundly through the lonesome dark, and whistled early with the lark. In winter trenches, cowed and glum with crumps and lice and lack of rum, he put a bullet through his brain. No one spoke of him again. You smug-faced crowds with kindling eye, you cheer when soldier lads march by. Sneak home and pray you'll never know the hell where youth and laughter go. Wilfred Owen, Mental Cases. Who are these? Why sit they here in twilight? Wherefore rock they? Purgatorial shadows, drooping tongues from jaws that slob their relish, baring teeth that leer like skulls, tongues, wicked. Stroke on stroke of pain. But what slow panic gouged these chasms round their fretted sockets? Ever from their hair and through their palms, misery swelters. Surely we have perished, sleeping, and walk hell. But who these hellish? These are men whose minds the dead have ravished. Memory fingers in their hair of murders. Multitudinous murders they once witnessed. Wading sloughs of flesh these helpless wander, treading blood from lungs that had loved laughter. Always they must see these things and hear them. Batter of guns and shatter of flying muscles. Carnage incomparable and human squander rocked too thick for these men's extrication. Therefore still their eyeballs shrink tormented back into their brains because on their sense sunlight seems a blood smear. Night comes blood black. Dawn breaks open like a wound that bleeds afresh. Thus their heads wear this hilarious, hideous, awful falseness of set smiling corpses. Thus their hands are plucking at each other, picking at the rope knouts of their scourging, snatching after us who smote them, brother, pawing us who dealt them war and madness. Mijn eigen gedicht voor deze avond. De Ongedogen, 1914, 2014. Who are these? Why sit they here in twilight? Grote woorden spreken zelden van wie vielen, maar niet stierven. Offer, vrede. Vaderland. Hoor de ongedoden in de stilte die nog natilt in hun botten. Hoor hen horen wat ze hoorden. Zie hen wat ze zagen weerzien. Er wakkert vuur in hoe ze voortgaan. Er woekert brand die in hun lijf slaat als dat vuur weer uitwaait. Ik weet van niets. Na honderd jaar, na duizend, al dat slaan.
slapeloze toren kan ik alleen nog horen, zien en kleine woorden zwijgen.